Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about the Alliance ticket system. It's a pretty big change to how Alliance donations are going to be handled going forward, and it's a new system that Kabam has implemented. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this system. Okay, so first, I want to talk a little bit about resource loading. That is the main reason that this system was implemented. So what is resource loading? In order to do the higher end maps, it requires resources. There has to be enough gold, battle chips, and loyalty in the Alliance treasury in order for them to start the map. Okay, that's in the higher end maps. The lower end maps are free. So. When Map 7 especially first came out, the costs were higher than a lot of people were willing to pay or able to pay. And that created a market. You have people that are sitting on a lot of loyalty. Now, they may have gotten that loyalty legitimately. Uh, for example, I have about half a million loyalty because I'm very frugal with my loyalty, I do not spend it very often, and I made a deal with other alliance mates where they can pay my loyalty while I pay their battle chips because I'm always in the arena, so I tend to have a lot of battle chips. They don't like doing arena, so they don't have enough battle chips, and they want to continue to do the higher end maps, so we make a deal. I pay their battle chips um, or any other combination, but usually for me, it's they pay my loyalty and my gold and I pay their battle chips. So that means that I can build up quite a bit of loyalty. So that's a legitimate way of gaining loyalty. Of course, you have some of the illegitimate ways as well. However, what an alliance will do is they will hire, they will pay someone for their loyalty all right mercenaries so how that works they will with their loyalty say say i wanted to do it and i have five hundred thousand loyalty i will approach an alliance and say hey i have 500 loyalty for sale they will say okay well how much then they will pay me real money you know, um, PayPal or however I want to get paid. And then I will join the Alliance, donate that loyalty that they paid for, and then leave. Now the Treasury has the um, loyalty that it needs. And that is what resource loading is. So you would have a lot of people paying others to join the Alliance, donate the loyalty, and then leave. So the first thing that Kabam tried to do to address this was they added a lockout period. So you couldn't just join an alliance, donate, and leave. You had to join the alliance and wait for a period of time before you could donate. And the period of time was long enough that anyone that had to step out for somebody to join in would be missing out. That was how they tried to address the problem it did not solve it. What people did in that case was they created a shell alliance. So how that works is you have a secondary alliance. Okay, so one alliance is sitting there where none of the real members are. You might have the leader um, and that's it. You know, maybe he's in there with an alternate account. Then you would do what I just described, pay uh, some mercenaries to then come in, join that secondary alliance, wait out the time period, and then donate all of the loyalty, battle chips, uh, gold, whatever was paid for, usually by members of the primary alliance. Now, at the time that all of that's going on in the Shell Alliance, the main alliance is doing the maps and, and um, you know, performing as normal. Then once that's done, they leave 
the Shell Alliance, these mercenaries or friends, whoever um, donated all of that uh, gold, battle chips, and loyalty. Then at some time, usually after Alliance War and Alliance Quest uh, is over, everyone from the main alliance joins that alliance that now has a full treasury to do at least a month, usually, of Alliance Quest. And then the process is repeated for the main alliance that no longer has the main folks in it. Then people would join, wait out the week, donate to that treasury, and so on. That's one of the reasons it's called a shell. If you are familiar with the shell game where you put something underneath uh, and then you swap it around, well, that kind of switching and swapping um, is what we are talking about here. So the problem still remained and Kabam still wanted to address that problem. Enter the Alliance ticket system. So right now you cannot donate to Alliance Treasury, period. So that kills that entire process. Uh, what you're gonna have to do now is purchase tickets. And each map is going to cost a certain number of tickets. And each individual is going to have to pay for their own tickets. So there is no way that someone else can pay for your loyalty. All right. So this system addresses that situation very well. Okay. Uh, and I'm not passing a judgment on uh, what people had to do or felt like they had to do, uh, but it doesn't really matter what I think, what you think, this is Kabam's game, and they did not want this behavior going on. So they took steps to address the problem. Those steps didn't work. Now it's more drastic, a complete overhaul of that system. Now, the good about this system, I like this system for this reason. I have more flexibility in how I pay the donations for getting into a map, all right? So remember I talked about the deal that I would make. That's because I didn't have the loyalty, I didn't want or I didn't want to spend the loyalty. And so with the ticket system, I can use any of the three or actually four to buy a ticket. I can use battle chips, I can use gold, I can use loyalty and I can use units. All right, four ways to pay for these tickets and I can do a combination of them. So if you have a lot of gold, currently I have over 50 million gold and 4th of July is coming up. So I wanna save my units and my battle chips more than anything. So what I could do is I could use some of my loyalty and a lot of my gold which is just sitting there. So that is a lot more flexible. They've also reduced the cost of the donations a little bit, not much, but it is a reduction in the cost. So that's the good about this system. I love it, but it's not perfect. And there are two really big issues that are with the current system. So one of the issues they are gonna be compensating people for how they donated. They're gonna look at how much you've donated over what you actually used for the maps. And then they're gonna give you tickets, the ticket equivalent for the remaining or the excess that you spent. Well, this presents a problem for people that uh, have a deal with someone else in their alliance. I'm gonna use myself as an example since I do have such a deal. So I'm paying double the battle chips, right? But I'm not paying any loyalty or any gold. So what that means is that when Kabam looks over the payment, it will show that I overpaid a great amount of battle chips. But in actuality, I didn't because I didn't pay any gold or loyalty. Someone else did. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna look at all of the 
uh, battle chips that I paid over the past, I forget how long it is, three months, five months, something like that. And then they're going to give me tickets in compensation for how much I paid over. Now, the reason that this is a problem is someone else, like uh, the person that I have a deal with, they paid loyalty and gold. What is the exchange rate? So they're going to get tickets back for their overpayment as well. But the exchange rate is not equal. Battle chips, gold, and loyalty do not go in at the same rate. And so someone crunched the numbers and it's going to be a lot of tickets for some people that have those kinds of deals like myself and not a lot of tickets for the people who were paying the extra loyalty and gold. All right. So that's a big problem. And I don't know how Kabam is going to address it at this point in time. The other major issue with this system is that you have alliances that split the maps that they do across the BGs. So you have three battle groups per alliance that you can have. And you have some that will do map seven. You'll have some that do map seven, all three battle groups. But you also have some that do map six. Maybe two battle groups do map six and one does map seven. But you also have ones that do map five and map six. Well, one of the other things that they did during this uh, revamp is they made map five free. So you don't have to spend any tickets to do map five. So in an alliance that does a hybrid, those who are in a battle group that's doing map five get in for free. Someone that's doing the battle group that does map six or map seven, depending on how they split it up, they're going to have to pay all the ticket costs. But now here's the problem. Everyone gets the same rewards. So that creates an inequity, okay, or an inequality. And that is a big problem. And a lot of us have taken that to Kabam. They are aware of it. And they are in the process of making changes. I don't know when those changes are going to happen. Uh, I'm under an NDA, uh, and if you're unfamiliar with that, it means uh, non-disclosure agreement. I'm legally bound to the agreement to not divul uh, divulge a lot of details that goes on on the server. They can sue me, all right? Um, but I can tell you that a very big discussion was had and that they are going to be addressing it. And I don't know what the final solution is, but some of the solutions that I saw would address the issue. Okay, so that's the hope. All right. Now, the whole ticket system idea uh, kind of is opposite to the whole team idea for alliances. But it's something that they had to do to address the problem that I described earlier of resource loading. Okay. Um, because an alliance, you want everybody to be a team player. And because we were able to share the costs, make deals like this, we had more of a team atmosphere. You know, if you needed help, someone else could pay it for you. You know, oh man, this month, you know, I've just been so busy. I couldn't do alliance um, uh, arena and I don't have a lot of resources to make my donations. Well, a friend can say, you know what? I'll hit you up. Go ahead. Um, I'll pay yours for this time. And then you can pay me back later. You know, so that person, maybe they will work extra hard. And I know people that have done that. You know, they were short one, uh, one month. But then the next month, they played extra hard. And they were able to pay that person's. So that creates a nice little... in. Um, you know, atmosphere of teams. But with this system, it's going to be more individualized. And it's necessary because people abused the other system. Okay, so that is the Alliance ticket system. In a nutshell, there may be other issues with the system. But those two things 
with the donations are the largest issues that I see with this system. And Kabam is already on the ball. There's no need to uh, get angry, upset, uh, try to, you know, force them to do anything. They're already aware. They've already um, got a, a possible solution in place. It most likely won't go into effect when the system goes live. But I don't want to say that it won't because I'm not sure. Because uh, these things take time. It's a process. Uh, and, I, and I don't know what their time frame is. They want to get everyone's input before they pull the trigger, implement this solution to the system, because it's gonna be a modification to the current system. So don't give up hope. Uh, this is only the Alliance ticket system addressing one issue. This is not addressing all of the issues in the game that people have, okay? Um, but they are aware of a lot of those issues and they have discussions. They're moving forward with some, other things have to be tabled. You know, that's just the reality of uh, development. All right. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully um, you found this informative. Uh, click like, subscribe, definitely leave a comment and weigh in on this particular issue. If you know of some issues with the system that you're not thinking about, uh, that I haven't mentioned rather, uh, then definitely leave a comment because there are other issues uh, and a lot of them revolve around the donations. Uh, I remember someone mentioning, I think it was Cam, uh, a, a couple of issues that he hadn't even thought about um, when he wrote up some issues, pros and cons. All right. So that's going to do it. Take care. And you all have a blessed day.